Happening today, convicted murderer Alec Murdoch will be back in court this time in downtown Charleston. Our investigative reporter Ann Emerson tells us what we can expect. Alec Murdoch is expected to plead guilty today to nearly two dozen federal charges that he stole millions of dollars from his clients. Four of those charges carry a maximum sentence of 30 years, the rest 20 years. This all stems from Murdoch's theft of $9 million between 2011 and 2021. Murdoch's agreed to fully cooperate with prosecutors to find that money, even taking a polygraph test if need be, and he's agreed to not challenge this conviction. In return, prosecutors have said that any self-incriminating information provided by Murdoch to find the missing millions will not be used against him. Murdoch is expected to appear before Judge Gurgle at 10 a.m. today. After the hearing, stay tuned later in the day for a new episode on our award-winning podcast, Unsolved South Carolina. The Murdoch's Murders, Money, and Mystery, our exclusive legal analyst and South Carolina former Attorney General Charlie Condon will help us break down the day's developments. First tonight at five, new developments in the deadly car crash that killed a bride on her wedding night out on Folly Beach. A Charleston grand jury formally indicts Jamie Komoroski, the driver in that crash. Our investigative reporter Ann Emerson is here to break down the details. Ann. Well, Komoroski has been indicted on four counts. They are felony DUI resulting in death, reckless homicide, and two counts of felony DUI resulting in great bodily injury. On April 28th, police say Kamarowski was driving drunk when she rear-ended a low-speed vehicle on Folly. That crash killed a new bride, Samantha Miller, and severely injured her husband, Eric Hutchinson, and another person as they left their wedding. Police say Kamarowski's blood alcohol level was three times over the legal limit. Kamarowski was denied bond August 1st and remains at the Al Cannon Detention Center. The prosecution has said they hope to go to trial by spring or summer next year. If they do not go to trial by then, a judge ruled Kamarowski will get a $150,000 bond with conditions like house arrests and monitoring of blood alcohol levels. Investigators are hoping what's left of a high-tech military jet will shed more light on how and why it crashed. The F 35B Lightning II jet went missing on Sunday after what the military calls a mishap. Reports say the pilot was on a routine training mission when he ejected over North Charleston, landing in someone's backyard. The aircraft was on autopilot. Debris from the jet was discovered Monday just off Indian Town Road in Williamsburg County, about 60 miles from where that pilot ejected. We've learned four deputies are working on a 12-hour shift rotation to secure and protect the search area, which officials tell us is about one mile long. ABC 15's Tanya Brown is continuing coverage. She's live from Bartell Crossroads in the Indian Town community of Williamsburg County for us tonight. Tanya? Connor, Bartell Crossroads and several roads that surround it could be closed for up to three weeks, if not longer. Now, many people in the community say they don't mind at all. They just want crews to get every piece of the jet's wreckage and leave nothing behind. Sometime overnight, a Moran environmental recovery truck came in to help with the cleanup. The company's website says they specialize in spill preparedness and response and are contracted to support the government. There's also a sign at Bartels Crossroad that reads no trespassing, declaring it a national defense area. NDAs are established on non-federal land for the purpose of safeguarding classified defense information or protecting defense equipment. The Williamsburg County Sheriff's Office is working to keep the search area secure and deputies tell me the mile long area is very dense. Community members say the area where crews are recovering parts of the F-35 jet is boggy and swampy. One man tells me that it's not easy to get around in that swamp. Hopefully they can uh, salvage the, the wreckage and answer the questions that they have and that's probably the most important part right now. Deputies say military personnel have told them they could be in the Indian Town community for at least three more weeks. Some community members say they don't mind the invasion of the military, not one bit. 
I understand that people got to do the job. I mean, no matter what it takes, they got to do the job. Most of the local people, I don't think you'll have a problem with them. I mean, they're all nice. Uh, they tend to follow directions and follow orders pretty well. So I don't, I don't see where that'll be a problem. I called every member of the Williamsburg County Council to see if they've been told any information about the search and rescue, and only one of them responded. He says as a council, they haven't been told anything at all, but he hopes they'll be briefed really soon.